Morning everyone, Seamus McCauley, CEO of Bright Green here, and you're very welcome to this third instalment of our weekly video log. For those of you who have seen them last week, we uh, covered uh, the DEA and how important and pivotal uh, the registration of our license with the DEA is to the Bright Green business moving forward. And this week I wanted to, to touch on the FDA and share uh, uh, equally how important and pivotal the FDA will be to the Bright Green plans uh, moving forward. So a little bit of background. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration are a federal agency. They sit under the Department of Health and Human Services and they have really uh, a, a quite a wide and broad scope uh, in terms of what they do. Um, they effectively are, are, are responsible for ensuring uh, public health and safety for a broad range of products, looking at medicines, vaccines, all the way through to medical devices, to food supplements, to nutraceuticals, um, um, really quite a broad scope. And, and, and I think we should all be very glad that we uh, have an FDA in situ, because of course, what we're talking about is the introduction of compounds or medicines, or indeed devices um, um, that are designed for human health and therefore there needs to be an agency that oversees that process and ensures that any of the products the the devices are fit for purpose they do what they say on the tin and in actual fact they do not introduce any harm into the human supply chain as it as it as it, uh, as it goes um i think then as it relates to cannabis the FDA have a, have a hugely important role to play. And I think it's fair to say that up to this point, um, I think they've had their challenges dealing with the cannabinoid medicines and the development of cannabinoid medicines and, uh, and, and applying a framework that sits uh, um, above that process to ensure that, that again, uh, their mandate is met in that no compounds are, are introduced into the human supply chain that don't uh, have a robust set of data uh, and and really have been investigated thoroughly to ensure that all side effects, that all benefits are articulated and indeed have been scientifically um, and robustly verified. So <clears throat> when we think about the FDA and how it applies to bright green, we have to think about it in terms of the um, combination with our DEA license. So Bright Green uh, have three different uh, approaches, I guess, that relate to FDA processes and, and point towards how important and pivotal the FDA will be. The first of those is, of course, that we aim to grow cannabis and extract the cannabinoids to a very high standard. That uh, allows us to supply research facilities across the United States and indeed internationally with good quality, consistent material that's suitable for uh, um, what we would call highly elevated clinical trial purposes. Um, <clears throat> achieving that, as, as articulated last week through the, the DEA license, uh, under or really quite extensive quality management uh, system, uh, uh, underpinned by all of those SOPs um, means that uh, its or aim in bright green is to produce really robust and, and consistent material that can be applied to the research uh, arena and, and meet all of the requirements that are set down by both the FDA and any other uh, regulatory bodies around the world. The second uh, approach then, of course, is the medicines uh, themselves. Uh, bright green have access to number one, our own uh, um, set of medicines that are IP'd and obviously we have access to the Alterola medicines uh, which we will fund and develop moving forward. That pathway for any medicines regardless of whether that's cannabinoid medicines or, or whether it's penicillin uh, is, is quite well established and the stepwise process is quite clearly defined. That means that Bright Green can then uh, um, apply for what's called uh, an IND uh, number, which is an investigational new drug um, application process. And, and that's quite methodically mapped out as to how that molecule or those compounds or that medicine uh, flows through the FDA processes. Third, and, and equally important, is the over-the-counter uh, market. Now, there have been a lot of developments in the United States over the last number of years. Um, the Farm Bill, <clears throat> not being least of which, 
which means that actually the FDA um, have, have really got quite a big process um, um, to undertake, which is assessing and making recommendations for uh, cannabinoids being used for medical purposes outside of the investigational new drug process. Now, again, this is where Bright Green will, will uh, really come into their own. Um, and if we think about the three elements here, number one, there's the production of high quality, uh, uh, high grade, consistent cannabinoid materials that can be supplied to organizations and research facilities, uh, again, around the US or indeed internationally. Second of all, we will have our arm, uh, which is our human medicines program. And, and, and that will we will engage with the FDA and we will follow that process for each of those medicines all the way through the various stages and, and various cycles uh, um, all the way uh, to marketing authorization for each of those medicines. Initially, Bright Green will, will deploy uh, five medicines, five compounds into the FDA IND process. And that's what we're currently working uh, towards achieving as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, third, and, and equally important then, of course, is going to be the clinical research and the robust data that we generate. Um, many of you will have seen our scientific advisory board and indeed the wide network that Bright Green operate within. And some of these, are, uh, some of these guys are the most experienced cannabinoid guys in the world, bar none. And we're very excited about taking some of the, the, the material and the raw material um, conducting the clinical trials and the research to determine the outcomes that are achievable by using cannabinoids in variety of, of ratios and uh, configurations and, and what the endpoint of, of each of those molecules and those compounds are, which again in turn will feed into the FDA processes and, and help, in our view, shape and inform policy moving forward. So I think when you combine the bright green DEA license with or a desired work with the FDA, it, it actually makes great bedfellows because effectively we are um, controlling the grow, we're controlling the materials that are uh, made available. And again, high quality, good consistency is, is really the pivotal piece behind that. Whilst we also then focus on our own brands and our own medicines that we can bring to market ourselves. Now, all of that points towards revenue and also points towards structure and infrastructure to facilitate doing and achieving all of the points that we've made uh, um, uh, earlier. Um, to that end, uh, uh, next week, what I'd like to touch on in a little bit of detail is combining, uh, um, I guess, the DEA, the FDA uh, approaches, as well as the, the, the company as a whole, and really start to, to give an overview of where the revenue streams will come from, what potentially those might look like, and, and potentially what the market themselves uh, uh, are looking for in each of those sections that we're, we're mapping out. So again, uh, reinforce uh, uh, my excitement and my anticipation of what lies ahead. Um, we are very close to major milestones within the company and those milestones will really springboard us into a significant market. And given the bright green plans and how focused we are on quality, how focused we are on, on the generation of, of robust, meaningful clinical data, as well as advancing each of our new medicines, which are cannabinoid based, uh, it really is uh, an exciting time uh, to be in bright green. And uh, there are some great things uh, in the future. So thanks for your time today. Uh, I hope you guys have a, have a great week. Um, and I look forward to tuning in next week again, uh, where I will look in a little bit more detail at the revenue streams and the potential uh, yield that we will look through for bright green over certainly the next 12 uh, and 24 months. So thanks for your time and uh, look forward to speaking next week.